Here we're gonna solve two interesting equations over natural numbers. And before the crazy discussion start in the comments, I'm gonna use the natural numbers not to include zero. So in other words, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Sometimes called the positive integers. Okay, so this first one will be find all natural numbers A, B, and C such that one plus one over A times one plus one over B times one plus one over C equals five. And we'll write the solution as a triple. So A comma B comma C equals something comma something comma something. So maybe before we get going with this, I'll give you a hint first. So the first hint is you can assume some ordering on these numbers A, B, and C. So maybe you wanna assume that A is the smallest, B is bigger than or equal to A, and C is bigger than or equal to B, and then use that to get some sort of bound on A. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go with that hint, and now we're gonna start a solution. So like I just said, we're gonna start making the assumption which doesn't ruin our generality. So in other words, without loss of generality, we're gonna assume that one is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to B, which is less than or equal to C. We can do that because there's some symmetry in this equation. Notice that A, B, and C are really playing the same role. Now what we wanna do is take this inequality and turn it into something that looks like the pieces of this left-hand side. In other words, the product pieces that we have over here, one plus one over A and so on and so forth. And we can do that by taking the reciprocal and then adding one, but taking the reciprocal is going to change the order of this inequality. So notice we're gonna have one plus one over A will be bigger than or equal to one plus one over B, which is going to be bigger than or equal to one plus one over C. And each of those is going to be bigger than one plus one over one, in other words, two. Great. So now what we wanna do is get some sort of bound on A, the smallest such number. And we actually don't have to try very hard because the larger A is, the smaller this product one plus one over A is, up to the point that it might be impossible to get this number five. So let's go ahead and notice that if A is bigger than or equal to two, then that tells us that um, one plus one over A is going to be less than or equal to three halves because we have one plus half. And then one plus one over B and one plus one over C are each smaller than that as well. So now notice that's gonna tell us that if we take the product of each of these, so one plus one over A times one plus one over B times one plus one over C, that's going to be less than or equal to three halves cubed because each of those pieces is smaller than three halves by the construction that we've made so far under the assumption that A is bigger than or equal to two. But notice that's equal to uh, 27 over eight Great, but 27 over eight is uh, clearly less than 40 over eight, which is equal to five. And remember, our goal is for this product to be equal to five. So what that tells us is that A cannot be bigger than or equal to two. In other words, A has to be equal to one. Good, so we know one part of this triple already. We know that A has to be equal to one and now we need to play the same game on B and C. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll maybe call this part of this product right here LHS for the left-hand side of our goal. And now notice under the uh, construction that we have so far, which is A equals one, this left-hand side is going to be two times one plus one over B times one plus one over C. And our goal is for that to be five. So now we have this simplified equation to solve. Okay, now we're gonna play the same game. So we're gonna bound B below by some number, and so you might wanna play with it a little bit. Maybe B cannot be bigger than or equal to five, four, three, but it turns out that we can use the same thing that we did here, um, and let's work that out. So let's notice if B is bigger than or equal to two, well then that is going to tell us 
that three halves is bigger than or equal to one plus one over B, which is bigger than or equal to one plus one over C. Great. But that's going to make this left-hand side, which is equal to two times one plus one over B times one plus one over C, will be uh, less than or equal to. So we've got this two times three halves squared because each of these is less than or equal to three halves. But now notice that that gives us nine over two. So notice we get nine over four times two, but nine over two is four and a half. That is most definitely strictly less than five. So in other words, B cannot be bigger than or equal to two, which tells us that B must be equal to one. So we've got two parts of our triple already. We have A must be equal to one and B must be equal to one. But that means we've got a really simple equation to solve for C. So we've just had the left-hand side of our equation collapse to two times two times one plus one over C equals five. That two times two is because A and B are both one. Okay, so notice that is going to give us four times one plus one over C is equal to five. In other words, one plus one over C is equal to five over four. But then we can think about one as four over four, which is going to give us one over C equals five over four minus four over four, which is one over four. And finally, we get C equals four. And that's gonna be the only solution to this equation. So in other words, the only solution here is A equals one, B equals one, and C equals four. Okay, so now let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at this second problem. Okay, so now for the second problem, I'll give you a hint and then we'll launch right into the solution. And so my hint here is to complete part of the square on the left-hand side and then turn this into a factorization type problem. So maybe give this problem a go with that hint and now we're gonna launch into the solution. So I'm gonna rewrite this as a squared plus six a minus b squared equals zero. And notice I left a little gap there, and I did that so I could complete the square in the a squared plus six a part. So we can complete that square pretty easily by taking half of six and squaring it. So half of six is three squared is nine. So we're gonna add nine to this side of the equation, but since we don't need to change anything, we wanna add nine to the right-hand side of the equation as well. So now we've got an equivalent equation to our original, but it's constructed in a way so that we can factor this bit that I have in purple. So let's see, this bit that I have in purple is now going to factor like a plus three quantity squared minus b squared equals nine. Great. Now furthermore, we see that we have a difference of squares on this right hand side. We've got a plus three squared minus b squared, and so that's gonna factor as a difference of squares factors. So we can just write that down real quick. That's gonna factor like a plus b plus three and then a minus b plus three. So I've reordered it a little bit, but we have a plus three plus b, a plus three minus b, but I've just put the two variables kind of next to each other. So again, that's how the left-hand side of this factors. And now we have this right-hand side is still equal to nine. But now given that a and b are supposed to be natural numbers, there are only two possible ways that this factorization can occur, and that has to do with the factor pairs of nine. So we have nine can factor like one times nine, or nine can factor as three times three. Now notice that since three and three are equal to each other, but, these two numbers, a plus b plus three and a minus b plus three are not equal to each other. Given that a and b are natural numbers and we're not including zero as a natural number, we have that the actually only possible factorization here is one times nine. So this three times three is not possible in our setup. So maybe if you think about the other definition of natural numbers, including zero, I'll let you guys think about what the solution would be in that case. 
So now furthermore, we know this A plus B plus three is bigger than this A minus B plus three. So we know exactly what role is being played by each of these factors on the left hand side and the right hand side. So we've got A plus B plus three must be equal to nine because that's the larger one and a minus b plus three must be equal to one, again, because that's the smaller one. But now we can maybe move all of the numbers to the right-hand side of the equation, and that's gonna give us a plus b equals six, and a minus b equals negative two. And now we've got a fairly simple system of equations to solve. So maybe the way I would like to do it is add the two equations, and that's gonna give us 2a equals 6 minus 2, which is 4, which tells us that a equals 2. Great. And now that we've got a equals 2, we can easily plug that into the first equation. We have 2 plus b equals 6. In other words, we have b equals 4. And so that gives us a solution down here of 2 comma 4. And that's in fact the only solution over the natural numbers to this equation. And that's a good place to stop.